Hello my friends. I have eyebrows today. Some of you are worried. They're there. They're just fine. Don't even think I lost one brow hair. So today, I, have, well, I don't know what I've been doing today. Feels like I've been doing a lot. Probably have it, not compared to y'all. But for some reason I'm out of breath. <laughs> it was the stairs. So I thought I, I wanted to do just a really quick eye look, which we'll get to in just a second. But I actually had a few requests because Last week we compared Double Wear to this foundation and um, this one I was not loving. And I know sometimes things aren't for certain people. I have balanced to dry skin and I only say dry because sometimes I can be dry so I wanna put that in there. But upon trying this, my, foundation, my skin is balanced. It's just vibing. It's having a really good time and the way that this dries down, we're gonna get back to this, but the way that this dries, it dries too quickly. Um, and I also find that even for the most oily skin type, something like this, even with alcohol, is just going to send your skin into chaos, which then in turn gets you away from being more balanced. So I don't, unless you've tried it and you do enjoy it, remember we are all different, but I think all over, it's not that it's a bad foundation, it just has a lot of something in it that makes it very tricky to work with. And if if I am having trouble working with it, um, it's where I'm at on my makeup journey, I don't think that this is a foundation that is something most of you will enjoy. The dry down time is almost instant and that means that while you're still trying to put it where you want it, it's gonna become patchy. Um, it's, it says caution, flammable until dry. <laughs> it's on the back. That's how much alcohol is in here. <laughs> of course, it's backwards, but you can read the caution there. Um, it's just on the back. And that's from the alcohol, which gives it that long wear transfer proof. But because there is that much alcohol that there's a warning, it dries too quickly. And it's just, it's very, very tough. And, and for, for as complicated as it becomes, because yes, we could get this to work, but not all of us have that time that... We don't want to put in that effort, so that's why we're coming back to this, but I'm, I'm taking a big old loop. Um, we don't want to take that kind of time when we could just use something that is much easier to work with and gives us the same results, if not better, because it's not a patchy mess. Now, the first thing I want you to do is remember that I have a saved highlight for skin prep for all skin types. I want you to watch that. So this is... We're gonna call what the next step I'm gonna do primer, even though you're really not gonna see a primer, okay? It's wild, I know. But we're gonna get there. First, I have a safe highlight, one more time. Skin prep, all skin types. All right, let's go. Oily skin, how are we going to prep now? If you want a little bit of primer, what I'm gonna recommend, this is wild. So you have your, your, your moisturizer on, you have your skincare, your skin prep. If you still need to kind of combat some oil that might creep up later because that extra oil is sometimes just our skin trying to find balance. It's, it's having a rough time. It's trying to figure it out. So using a liquid eyeshadow doesn't have to be this close to your skin tone. I'm so happy I found this one, but I could use Capulets, which is this shade. There it is. I could use this. I'm going to use this, but all you need is a liquid eyeshadow pretty close to your skin tone. Even this lightly buffed out would be fine because obviously Estee Lauder Devil Wear is going to cover that up. But if you're oily, here, here we go. And also if you have texture, applying an eyeshadow like this first is so good. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna lightly buff, just take the E29 here and you're just smoothing it out and we're diffusing. So that's why we're using a fluffier brush. I wanna diffuse it because we don't want a thick layer. That again could just make that oil production get wild, but just a little bit of this helps everything stay in place. It's going to just ever so lightly balance and control and it just helps texture. So if you have texture anywhere else, just apply this or whatever color that's the closest to your skin tone. Again, it does not have to be perfect. So this, again, we're gonna put this where we're oily, but even if you're not oily, say you're balanced to dry and you have a dry patch, this trick is still gonna work. This is such, such a good trick 
because once it dries, it doesn't move. So you don't run the risk of it mixing into your foundation. And also the way that it just creates a barrier without slip. So sometimes when we use um, a primer like this, mm -hmm, guess what happens? It doesn't dry down completely. So it can still slip around and move around no matter how long we wait for it to dry, no matter how much we try to press that into the skin, it just doesn't dry down. So that's one of the reasons you don't see me recommend these kind of silicone primers all the time. So I think that this is probably one of the greatest tips ever, especially underneath double wear, really underneath any foundation, but it, it still has that long wear property like double wear does. So they go together very nicely. So I have that on the back of my hand here, where it ran away. No, there it is. This, I have the professional on the back of my hand and it's dried down, but I can still kind of just go across it very lightly, right? And I feel it over here. And that just means it's transferring. That's gonna go into your brush. It's gonna go into your foundation. It's gonna go on different parts. It can separate. I don't like this. <laughs> so I have that on the back of my hand here where it ran away. No, there it is. This, I have the professional on the back of my hand and it's dried down, but I can still kind of just go across it very lightly, right? And I feel it over here. And that just means it's transferring. That's gonna go into your brush. It's gonna go into your foundation. It's gonna go on different parts. It can separate. I don't like this. <laughs> now, if you have an extra crunchy patch, we've all been there. My retinol week, sometimes I get crunchier than a bag of Frito-Lays. But listen, this stuff. Now, I know you're thinking, Rose, we know, Elemis, hush. The way that Elemis pairs with makeup. There's a reason that I even have the partnership that I do with them. And that's because I wouldn't stop tagging them and I won't leave them alone. The way that just about everything Elemis has pairs with makeup is just it's perfection. It truly is. So this is an oil, but a lot of times oils, they sometimes just change that formula and it just becomes too wet, moves around, and you can have this beautiful full coverage here and where you place that oil, sometimes it'll become light coverage. That's not what happens here. But look, I do apply it with a brush. I'm gonna show you. So say we even have some fine lines. We just want a little extra hydration because the more hydrated the skin is, the better the makeup is going to look. But hydration is different than too much product. That's where I used to go wrong. I thought that hydration meant seven drops of this oil, put it on. That's not what it means. So I have one drop, okay? And I will use my one drop, but I'm grabbing about half of it. And I don't have any dry patches right now. My skin is just really listening to my demands currently. But if you do, I would take a little skincare brush like this. And I like the skincare brush because of how it deposits it and evenly places it. So I'm putting it where my fine lines are. Again, I don't have dry patches. Picking out just a little bit more. And again, this is for dry patches. Now you could mix this and put this all over your face. You absolutely can, but sometimes you don't really need that. Even if we think we do. Like I was saying, too much of a good thing is a bad thing. We all know it, even when it comes to skincare. Cause I know that when I would have a dry patch or I would feel dry, I would just want to just put too much on. And the amount that I just put on is so thin, but it's doing the job. And anytime you have a long wear foundation, you don't want too much skin prep. You, you need to find that balance. And again, that's one of the reasons I use skincare brushes because of the way they do, they deposit it and the way they spread it on the face. Um, they really do make a difference. I know they might seem a little gimmicky, but I promise you they're not. And that's why um, foundation usually has a good time on my face. And there are mattifying primers that I do enjoy. But again, when, when you're dealing with long wear foundations like this, it's just best to have things that can absolutely dry down like this oil. Um, or like the eyeshadow. So that's why I'm recommending these. If you're wondering like, well, why didn't you just tell me a mattifying primer? We can get a little heavy handed with those. And also they just won't completely dry down. So that's what we're looking for. That's the moral of the story under any long wear foundation is things that can completely dry down so the foundation is not disturbed while you're putting it on top of that prep. Now your skincare has time to dry down. The first video I made you watch, that has time. That's all fine, but 
the next step that I just showed you, it has to be something that dries down. Okay, I don't know if y'all can see this, but I have a huge pore right here. Like just an enlarged pore for no reason. Just woke up one day and my skin was like, <laughs> that's what it said. But I just put the eyeshadow in there and you can't see it. And then we're going to put foundation on it and it will disguise it. So it does disguise large pores because that's a crater. That's way, that I know is going to be way more than what we would have around our nose and even here on our cheeks um, because it's literally like, it's a gaping hole. It might even be a scar. Oh, we should try it on my scar too. My chicken pox scar. I'm just a roadmap chaos. So now I'm putting the foundation on top and it completely disguised it. Yep. So if it's gonna disguise this crater in my head here, we're good to go. I'm gonna take I'm gonna take off the makeup just so you can see what it looks like. <laughs> That's so cool. Now I'm just gonna tap some of my foundation on top. And I think that's the best my scar's ever been hidden. I'm gonna wipe it off so you can compare again. Look at that. It's like I wasn't itching for my life with my chicken pox. All right, I just wiped it off. Look at this difference. That's wild, fun, right? Yep, I mean, there you go. Look at this, for what? I've had it since I was a teenager. I, I didn't even get a pimple there. I just woke up and it was all, <laughs> And I'm like, well, great, great. All right, since you asked so nicely, if you really do wanna use this, you wanna learn how to use it, I love you, I'm gonna show you. I am going to initially take this on a little brush. I just like my skincare brushes. We'll cover this one up again, okay? I'm gonna use a lot of it at first because we're kind of building up the skin on the scar or if you're working on um, even larger pores. Now where I'm at right now, I'm not even gonna mess with this, I'm, I wouldn't. Um, but for texture, I want you to take quite a bit of it, okay? Um, I'm trying to see if I can get my milia to show. There you go. Let's put some here, okay? Look how much I'm using. That's a lot for that area, okay? Build it up. Get in there. You're building up the area. You almost have to think of it as prosthetics in a sense. Are we having fun? I know I'm having fun. Now, the next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna move to a makeup brush. We want something with very short, dense bristles, an angle preferably. You know what? We have a brush for that. <laughs> we're gonna grab the C31, but instead of going directly here, at first I'm going to try to smooth around it. Okay, I'm pulling it in every other direction. Same thing here. I'll go around the milia. And this is just a tutorial for some of you that already have this. I don't I don't want you to feel like you need to go get this. I don't love this, but if you already have it, it, it we might as well not waste it. And then if you really want to get nitpicky, we're, we're, we're getting into just artistry now, but y'all y'all are ready for it. I feel like all I do is teach all the basics but take a smaller brush and just pinpoint. And then we repeat that same step, okay? Where we go around with the C31. But right now we are just getting in here. We're at medium level artistry. And now look, it's a little lumpy, that's fine. That's what the C31's for, but we're still just packing, but with a smaller brush. And you can see that I really packed it into my scar here. and then feather out the edges. Okay, now that we have it basically smoothed where we want it, we're just gonna do a couple stamps. Do not swipe. We do not want to disturb. Okay, as few stamps as possible. Now take an eyeshadow very close to your skin tone. Doesn't have to be perfect. A full coverage foundation is gonna go on top. It's ever so lightly, press that and set it. Now we're just going to take a flat brush, tap that foundation over it. <laughs> that's, that's so good. It's barely noticeable now. Then we would just go back around that area with the smaller brush, the C31. 
And there you have it. I didn't blend around here. I'm about to take it off anyways, but it does work, but it's way more work. But I mean, it's, if you have it, might as well learn to really use it. So I've always loved these, but for some reason I had not tried this particular color since yesterday. And I mean, since yesterday, until yesterday. Please help me. <laughs> By the way, I wiped all this off. We're gonna do the double wear in a second, but let's do a quick eye. And what you're seeing me do here is I do like to warm it up on my knuckle because it's not that these dry out, they just kind of go back to a little bit more of a less pliable state. So we've got that, there it is. We're not gonna waste any of that. We're gonna pick that up on our C, our, our E29. And I'm just gonna buff this into my socket. And this is just such a pretty shade. It reminds me of this shade in Mario's palette, but better. And then now that this is warmed up a little bit, I can just pick it up in here. And I'm just gonna, again, buff that into my socket. You don't need any primer with these either. I didn't know that we were gonna do a full master class on that. <laughs> I just felt like we needed to though. So I'm just building this up a little bit more. Such a pretty shade. It's, it's in this pink realm and it's not quite going over into purple. It's like a more neutral, in, in the realm of neutral, it's a neutral mauve. I'm gonna do the same thing over here. I, I think this formula is fantastic, especially for just, you know, say you're in a little bit of a hurry, but you still wanna look a little bit more, you know, spicy. I love this, I love them so much. Nice, and they blend like a dream. I'm gonna grab the shade Studio too, as well. And I'm just gonna buff that right above, just for a little bit more of a warmer transition, but not too warm. If you're ever starting to go with your eye makeup, grab a warm shade and just throw that as your transition, you'll start to like the look again. Because sometimes when we get over into cooler tones, it immediately starts to pull things underneath here. And we could wait, we could wait till the end, but if you're just not in the mood, grab a warmer tone, buff that through here, this upper part. You know what, I do, I do wish that Merit had a more bone colored shade, that'd be so amazing. Something closer to this, maybe even lighter. Um, in that formula. So Merit, if you're watching this, just a suggestion. This shade, Nelson, it is this brown gray that is just so perfect. It doesn't go too blue and I love it. So E27, I'm, I'm just gonna say it really enhances this look. I'm gonna take it, see that pointy side? I'm just gonna press it right here and it just kind of angles up, see that? And then I'm just gonna buff it there. So we want the majority of the depth here. Then I take the E29 again, and I'll just tap before it sets, because these do set, but they don't set so quick that a beginner can't handle them. Okay, just tap that. And this is kind of the eye that I've been doing to film, and I love it. Nice, and then I'm just gonna if you can't shut one eye at a time like I can, I'm just gonna tilt my head back and just tap over this way. So I'm leaving that depth right through here. I was saying I'm kind of just softening it over this way, kind of all around it, but just not through here. Soften all the edges around it. And that's what we're working with. It just looks so good and it's so easy. I love it so much. I've really just been enjoying using this Nelson shade. And this technique is so easy. Hooded eye friendly, it's just easy and pretty. All right, we're doing our Libre Lashes style number five today. Here, just let it sit. Now, I have other things that I have to film today, but we're still gonna put on Estee Lauder, the, the double wear. But I'm gonna show you how to apply it. And then we're gonna call this tutorial done. I'm sorry it's so short. I need to save yesterday's, but I don't think it's that short. And there was a whole lot of information here. There was a whole lot going on. So I kind of got caught over there. I couldn't finish all of today's tutorial anyways, because like I said, I have so much I have to do, but there will always be a tutorial if I can, if I can get over here and I'm not stuck in a meeting, 
I've been trying to tell them to leave me alone with those meetings. They don't listen. <laughs> now the first step is to shake it up. I know I've said it before, but somebody new might be joining us. And with a long wear foundation, you have to shake it. Now I know this might seem tedious, but this is truly the best way to apply it, Amici. So it's all shaken. A makeup spatula, a, you, this is such a great addition and it's not a, a spicy priced addition and it makes what you already have so much better. So the reason I'm gonna use this is I'm gonna dip in here. Okay, I'm gonna wipe some of it off. And that dip is so perfect for through here, okay? Both sides, because we're wanting full coverage. You might think that's a lot, but I mean, we've gotta have this much. Now, some of it's gonna go upwards, but if you want coverage, you gotta get in there and use quite a bit of it. So now that I have it, I'm just gonna smooth it. And the reason we're gonna smooth it is because it's gonna help slow the dry time because it's really even across the skin. And it's gonna help us get it, grab our brush, get in here. It's already smoothed out, but the brush is gonna help spread it. And then it's not going to crust up our brush or become uneven. Listen, it's important to know that we're working in sections because we don't want this to dry and continue to go back over it. This is gonna be a lot more forgiving than the Urban Decay Foundation. This is so much easier but it's still a long wear foundation. Now we're gonna add more, but only up here. We don't have to add more down there. That one's covered and good to go and ready for Sheila, there's Sheila. Now it's nice and even. Again, we just don't wanna go over uneven foundation. That's why you always see me smooth it out because your tool is going to work better and it's not even gonna get as dirty. It makes it even easier to clean it and it works better even if you're using a sponge. Okay, we have this side done. Done. We don't want to add any more on top because it's starting to dry. This isn't dry right here. We just, we're calling that done. But now we're going to move to the forehead. I still have my little thing here. I'm going to use less on my forehead because I'm more expressive here. But still, I'm using more than I would with a light coverage. We're wanting full coverage. And if you're wanting a makeup spatula, just search makeup spatula on Amazon. And then another thing you're seeing me do is press. Swiping with this is not the way to go. You don't want to disturb it that much. You want to just get in there and you get more coverage when you stamp like this and you actually get that foundation to go further. So a less goes a longer way. Same thing on this side, smooth it out. It's actually kind of fun. Now it doesn't have to be perfect, but we just want it pretty flat. And I'll just use whatever's left there on my neck. Stamp it on my neck. And then we'll move back over here. Satisfying, right? Now we'll finish over here. And then you'll notice I haven't added any on my nose. I'm gonna try my best to apply the smallest amount there. And even on my forehead, I'm scraping just a little bit off. Anywhere I'm really expressive, I try my best to not, because we do need it all to match. That's not what I'm saying, but just I'll, f I'll, I'll concentrate more on how much I'm applying there. I'll, I'll think about it. I'll be more aware, that's a better way to put it. Now that we're to the center, I have just a little bit here and I will just do, because I still wanna put concealer here to highlight, but I still need to make sure everything's nice and cohesive. There we go. And again, with that eyeshadow underneath, remember how we use that? Pressing is the way to go. Also, don't be so afraid of your full coverage foundation looking a little off. What I have done here is I've, I, this is my undertone, but what you're not able to see now is any life back in my face. There's no redness coming up to the skin. So it's going to look off. For this, I would definitely put some foundation on my chest to kind of continue that. But this is a blank canvas. So when you get your foundation on and it looks a little mm, suspicious, don't be afraid. You literally have a blank canvas. That's why we do all the rest of it to bring it all back. But we have to create the blank canvas first. Now, obviously we want it to match, okay? So it's going, it's, it's, it's going where it needs to be, but there's a lot of blood coming to the skin here. There's just dimension, and that's what we have to add back. 
So now I'm gonna take actually a little bit of color corrector. Um, I'm not gonna need much. Oh, what does he need? Yay. My friend Julia here is helping me out organizing and Jean apparently needs something. So I'm gonna do a little bit of color corrector. I couldn't find my more heavy duty one, but this one will do on me. But if you had darker circles than me, you need a little bit more heavy duty one, but I have a video on that somewhere. But I'm just gonna even this out like I do concealer and I'm gonna let this dry down just a second. I forgot to tag it because Gene is just so cute. He's just being the cutest little chunky man. Cali Ray, I love this one. Now I normally wear this one when I'm doing a little bit more of a no makeup makeup, um, but for where I'm at, where my dark circles are, this is gonna be enough for me. So now I'm, I'm going to keep it really full coverage and we're gonna go in with our Hourglass foundation. And I'm wearing shade Silk foundation concealer. I'm out of control. But I do want you to know that this isn't going to mess with the foundation underneath because again, you're kind of reactivating it when you put more wet products on top. And I did a lighter shade so I can highlight with it. Cream concealer brush, we're gonna melt this in. And then I'm, I'm gonna have one side set because I'm doing a little video, but I'll come back and at least finish showing and I'll show you how to set. Have you ever wondered how long wear foundations? Well, you notice how I mentioned that once they dry down, we don't wanna go back over them. But again, this is that same theory of reactivating it. So we're adding the wet product on top so you don't have to worry about it because it just wants to fill in gaps anyways. So don't ever be afraid of that. Now, one thing I don't do is I don't let my concealer dry because I like to kind of tell it how to dry. And that's what setting does. That's why I don't wait for it to dry. I want to tell you how to dry. I don't want you to dry on your own. Ooh, we are, we are glamming. Oh, I love makeup. All right, let me go film something. I'll be back and I'll show you how I set it. I'll have one side, just my under eye set, but we'll, we'll be back. All right, I'm already back. Look at this difference. Now look at this perfect flow. It's because we're creating that d dimension. We're getting that back. All of that's coming back. It's not just now we have some light underneath our eyes with the concealer. It's starting to come back to life. Now I am just gonna finish setting powder here, um, but I feel like I did enough yesterday for three weeks. <laughs> so before we set our under eye, and I'm using my Nikia Joy Brightening Powder, I'm gonna link it for you. I'm gonna do a nice little tappy tap, okay? And then we're gonna go in immediately and we're gonna go ahead and set. Nice. Oh, this powder is so good. It's so smooth, but it's definitely more full coverage. So if you want a more everyday powder, I'm still going to recommend the Givenchy, but the Givenchy can kind of do both. But if you're wanting full coverage, this one. And then for the rest of my face, I'm going to use, I have it linked. I'm going to use the, this is the finishing powder. So I'm going to use a puff, same technique, even it out. And then I'll just kind of lightly set the rest of my face. And I feel like it's easier to go ahead and set a full coverage foundation instead of trying to set with the bronzer. Sometimes it can get a little, it can get a little muddy. It can, and I just don't want y'all to run that risk. So it's easier to do it that way. So I'm, the finishing powder, I'm just gonna go ahead and set everywhere else. And if you ever wanted to take it up a notch, you could use some powder foundation. You don't have to do this, but it is an option. I would use it on this brush. This one's from the Essential Travel Set, and I would just press it and work in small sections to build a little bit more coverage. That's just up to you. All right, tutorial is gonna to have to stop here because I have so much that I have to do. Um, fun stuff, but I do have to go do it. So I'm gonna to have to leave you here, but we definitely learned some things. We even learned how to fill scars, pores. We were just fixing it all today, and I'm glad we did that. I'm definitely gonna save this to my highlights, but I kind of want you to feel really comfortable with double wear and understand it. Because, well, really this goes for any long wear foundation. So if anything's long lasting, this tutorial is going to work for it. All right, my friends, I love you all so much. And I don't know what I'm posting tonight, but I'm definitely going to post and I'll see you there.